in. And then over here, there's some cave. You see it goes behind there. They have it lit up a bit. And the ceiling here is reasonably high, actually. Okay, now let's look at tube texture. Let's look at the nat natural floor. When visiting caves, you, are, you will walk across three textures of lava. The floor is on fragile formations too. Please stay on the trails. There's ropey, cauliflower, and clinker. As lava cools, it moves from ropey to clinker. When lava is still hot, a ropey texture is often produced. As lava continues to cool, it starts to tear, developing a floor we call cauliflower. Eventually, the lava becomes so rigid, the cauliflower breaks and begins to roll freely, causing a clinking sound, or clinker. Okay. So yeah, these are all free rocks. So this is the clinker stuff. Well, so you notice another side tube back there. Kind of pretty. I got this lit up well. I hope it shows up on camera. I don't know how well it's going to work out on camera. Breakdown. The lava tube as you see it today has not changed much since the pl that word. When the lava tube was developing, lava flowed through the cave, coating the walls in concentric layers. The coatings build up, creating a pattern similar to the layers of an onion called linings. Lava syrup and thick like honey help support structure structurally support the roof. Once the lava drained, the lack of this additional support caused the linings of the roof to collapse. The collapse you see before you is the result of this process and likely tens of thousands of years old. Let's see. Minor earthquakes occur regularly at Lava Beds National Monument, but have little effect on the tubes. Okay, I want to pan up here. So yeah, this is cool. Look at the size of those rocks over there. Here's a cool little uh, column here. Got decent lighting here. Okay. Notice it's sloping down. Looks like they dug the uh, artificial walkway here into the rock. Like, dig the cave deeper so we wouldn't have to crawl. Cheaters. They start a sharp ceiling. Oh, wow. Here's a nice tall room. Wow. It's like 25 feet tall or something. It's pretty good in here. Notice the light colored, what's it called? Light colored rock. It's like a movie theater here. Okay. Wow, look at the, uh, this looks like it was dripping syrup when it flowed. I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera, but. I gotta try. <laughs> Alright, so there's the end of the movie theater. I'm gonna go back. So notice there's obviously water dripping on these seats, but it's not frozen. It's a lot warmer in here. I mean, it's really warm in here. Still no sign of bats, though. The dark zone, yeah, except for all the lights. If it were not for artificial light, you would be standing in total darkness. The true nature of a lava tube is one of silence and solitude. All of the life in caves is adapted to the serene environment. Those creatures that live in the dark zone for part of their lives are known as troglophiles. Animals like bats will hibernate and raise their young in caves, but need to forage outside the cave in order to obtain food and water. Pack rats will nest inside the caves and remain active all year long. When you see mounds of sticks and branches or black tar looking clumps, amber rat, you are seeing evidence of your pack rat friends. Help protect the serenity of these caves by not disturbing the wild. Oh, keep your voices low. Yeah. The dark zone. 
Creatures known as troglobites will never see the light of day, spend their entire existence within the dark zone. Many are invertebrates, small creatures without backbones. Of these, decomposers feed off the waste left behind by hack rats and bats. They often fall prey to predators. Huh. Completing the cave food chain. Springtails and millipedes are two examples of decomposers seen throughout the park caves. Harmless to humans, predators like spiders and pseudoscorpions are equally important to cave ecology. Help protect these tiny creatures by staying on established paths. In other words, don't go trampling around everywhere. Wow. This is a pretty lit cave. Notice the ceiling is really rough. Definitely want to watch your head here. Notice the cave is still sloping downhill. I'm standing in water, but it's it's way above freezing. It's not ice at all. Yeah. Pull-offs. Notice the holes in front of you. Okay. These formations are referred to pull-offs. Pull-offs are created when the massive molten lava clinging to the walls pulls away without completely detaching. You are looking at the linings of this cave, like the onion layers explained before. Okay, then. <laughs> Wow, this ceiling is interesting. Kind of a reddish color, brown, rust brown. Wow, another low part of the cave. Gonna have to watch my head. Ooh, pretty. Oh wow. So up here there's obviously we scroll up a bit. There's obviously some cave up there. I'm not gonna try to get up there. It doesn't look safe. They want us to stay on the trail anyway. But yeah, this cave branches out a bit. Wow, notice we're heading maybe you can't tell by the video, but we're definitely heading downhill. It's not a steep slope, like maybe five or ten percent, but it's enough. Lava formations. Look along the walls and ceilings. All the textures, ridges, and knobs are primary cave formations. These form when the lava began to drain from the tube. The still molten lava coating the walls of the cave began to drip and run before it eventually froze. Dripstone, like icing running down the sides of a cake, these formations flowed and solidified vertically along the cave walls. Lava sickles are the long, pencil-thin formations hanging from the ceiling. If these formations are broken, they're gone forever. So the moral of the story is don't break them. <laughs>